Hey everyone, welcome to the Oak Cruise. <laughs> Not the Oak Cruise. Hey everyone, welcome to the Oak Roots YouTube channel. In today's tutorial, we are going to be making something that is so much fun, so much fun. It's very niche. You really have to have a very specific purpose for this, but you can also use it for other things. Let me just tell you. Today, we're going to be making fish extenders. Okay, now if you're like, what the heck is a fish extender? A fish extender is a device like this that usually has multiple pockets and it hangs outside of a stateroom main door, your main cabin door when you're on a Disney cruise ship. Now these are completely optional, they're not required when you sail with Disney Cruise or anything like that, but a lot of times there are groups that you can find on Facebook and people like to put together little exchange groups, fish extended groups. These are all strangers just picking up fun things for each other's families and then you run around the ship kind of like in secret and you go find their stateroom and you put it in their pockets. Now fish extenders have been around for a while. They're very, very fun. The reason they're called a fish extender is because traditionally on Disney cruise ships, it is a little fish little fish hook hanging outside of your door. Uh, on the new Disney Wish, they are other animals as well now, but we're still calling it a fish extender. Now, you can probably tell this one's not actually complete because I don't have like my ribbon or rope here. So normally you would have like some rope or ribbon that you just tie onto the ends of this and then you just hang it on the door. It's very simple. Now, I don't happen to have any ribbon or rope on hand, but I did wanna show you guys quickly this idea of the fish extender because one of the fun things about fish extenders is you have a pocket for every family member, but every family member is not always traveling on the same cruise. And if you like to make custom things like we do over here, that can get a little challenging because you don't really want to make a lot of fish extenders. So before I walk you through how this works, let me just show you. On Disney Cruise Ship, they do sell fish extenders. And this is part of like a kit you can get or like a whole package. Uh, but this is the same idea. So you see they have the rope up here. This has one, two, three pockets and it has all the Disney stuff on it, which is super cute. So again, you don't have to make your own fish extender. You don't have to get fancy with this. Disney does offer these as well. Um, before we took our first cruise on our Disney cruise ship, way back in the day when my babies were little, um, I made a fish extender. And this is from a YouTube tutorial that I found online. I'll see if I can link it down below. You can see it has a pocket for mom and dad, Mila and Newton, and it's very, very cute. You can see I just did a piece of wood through the top. I have a little ribbon here. You just hang it outside your door and it's super sweet. So today we're gonna go through something very similar to this one. However, a problem I was trying to solve was it's not always the same group of us sailing. And again, I like custom pockets. I like, you know, this one says Newt on it. This is his pocket. So sometimes we sail with my husband, sometimes my mother comes, sometimes we split up into different cabins, sometimes we're all in one cabin. So to accommodate that, I came up with an idea to make these fish extender pockets interchangeable using grommets. Using grommets, very, very simple. So I'm gonna show you a couple different ways to attach these together. As you can see, this is kind of like an O-ring clasp one, kind of like a keychain thing. I'll have links for everything down below as well. This is a very quick and easy project to make. There are no crazy curves, there's no zippers, nothing like that. It comes together super fast. The only thing that could take some time is if you decide to do some customization. We're gonna do a little bit of heat transfer vinyl today. We're gonna do a little bit of applique. We're gonna have some fun with this. So if you're new to the Oak Lords YouTube channel, please consider clicking subscribe down below. If you like this video, please give it a like. Any questions, comments, anything at all, leave them down in the comment section. If you are a handmade business and you're looking to sell fish extenders for other people who are looking to customize them, maybe, maybe somebody came to the video and they're like, I love the look of that, but I don't sew. <laughs> Can someone make this for me? Um, leave a comment down below with like your Etsy shop, or with your own website, whatever, however they can reach you. Because I know that as a cruiser, um, specifically a Disney cruiser, I'm always seeing people who are trying to find someone to make them custom fish extenders because they're just so beautiful. And these are fun to make. So if you are a seller, make sure you leave your information down below so that anybody who finds this video can scroll down to the comments and find you. And if you're wondering what the Oakla Cruise is, this is taking place in April of 2024, towards the end of April. I'll have a link down below for our Facebook group. This is a fun cruise on the Disney Wish. And it's just a hangout cruise for a bunch of Oakla Roots partners, viewers, friends, followers, all kinds of people. So there's gonna be a whole big group of us just hanging out, nothing, it's not a sewing cruise, nothing planned or anything like that. Pretty much just all of us just taking a cruise together as friends and just having a good time. So I'll have a link down below for that because it is gonna be a really fun event. All right guys, let's get started. All right, so how much material you're gonna need total for your fish extender is just really gonna depend on how many pockets you're gonna be making and then the sizes you're gonna be making them at. So I'll give you kind of like a general rule um 
of what I'm using. So for the pocket, which is what we're starting with right now, we're gonna make the pocket first. Uh, for the pocket, for the front and back main, I would suggest about a fat quarter of material. I'm using Theratex, which is a nylon material that has like a very, very light, soft, fuzzy backing. So there's no stretching or anything like that. This is also a material that's very easy to wipe down and keep clean, which is great, especially for fish extenders, because a lot of times we're just kind of taking them and you know, when we're originally packing, we're neatly folding them up in our suitcases and packing them for the cruise. But then at the end of the cruise, you might have some sand in your backpack or some sand in your suitcase and you're just kind of throwing everything in. So this at least will stay clean. And then for the pocket, I would also suggest about a fat quarter. Now I'm not using any sort of backing or lining or stabilizer or anything like that for the pocket piece. The back of the pocket will just be the back of the material. So I do suggest that you use like a water resistant canvas. If you wanna use a quilt cotton for the pocket piece, I would suggest using craft fuse as an interfacing on it. So craft fuse on the back. Again, I don't even think you need a liner on the back of it. That's personal preference. You can play around with this a lot though if you really want that finished look on the inside of the pocket as well. But personally, I'm just using some water resistant canvas. This is more lightweight than a waterproof canvas. It folds easily, it's very easy to use. So again, fat, fat quarter of each. All right, so here's a few other things. I like to use a binding. And now this is an adhesive binding. This is also a nylon material. So it's easy to just stick, wrap it around the edges. We don't have any curves here. It's all straight edges, so it's pretty easy to apply. You're gonna need about a yard of this per pocket. So I would always just buy a nice big roll of this. Now you don't have to use pre-made binding. You can make your own. If you prefer using a double fold quilt cotton binding, go ahead and do that. Any binding you're comfortable working with, um, I do really like this, and I also like the non-adhesive version of this, which we're gonna use for the topper in the next part of the video. And now I'm gonna be using these grommets. Now these grommets are applied using my rivet press, which is very quick, very easy. However, there are grommet options out there that you don't have to use a rivet press to install. These ones are the 12.1 millimeter grommets, so something around that size. Here, I'll measure it out for you. So the finished size of these grommets is just under seven eighths of an inch in diameter. Um, anything around that size, it doesn't have to be exact. It, you have plenty of room to work with here. And then you're gonna need some way to connect the pockets to one another and connect them to the top panel. I love these, honestly. These are like little O-rings, but they're clasps. You can get these off of Amazon. I'll have a link for them down below. Um, I really love these because they're small enough to kind of keep everything nice and tight together, and they do close, so you don't have to worry about anything falling off. However, another really great option are these shower hooks, these S-shaped shower hooks. You might be concerned with these about things kind of falling off, but as long as the pockets are hanging, they shouldn't fall off of these S-shaped hooks, and they're really cute and makes it very easy to interchange the pockets. Also, there are other types of shower hooks like these little colorful ones here and these do close. So again, lots of options for connecting everything together. All right, so here's most of the other stuff I'll be using today. Like I said, I'll be installing my grommets using my rivet press. I love this option. Um, if you wanted to do the same thing, you're gonna need a couple of special things for this. First, you're going to need a bottom die for punching holes, and you will need the hole punch for the 12 millimeter. So this is the 12 millimeter hole punch, and it's going to cut a perfect hole to insert our grommet in. Another option you could do is just trace the inside of the grommet and then cut it out with scissors if you want, if you really don't wanna invest in this, but this makes quick work, especially if you're gonna be making a lot of these. And then you're going to need the die set for the 12 millimeter grommets. So there's a bottom and a top die here. I'll show you how to use that. For the top thread, the thread that's going through my needle, I'm using a Tex 45 weight thread in color Fairy Floss. In the bobbin, I'm using a Mara 100 weight thread. And the needle I like to work with is a Microtex 8012. I have a one inch by six inch ruler as always. A couple marking tools, a silver ink pen, a chalk marking tool is gonna to be helpful. Some sort of a stiletto steamer. A stiletto is very, very useful when you're attaching the binding at the machine. Lots of little clips and some double-sided tape can be very helpful, especially if your binding does not have adhesive on it. So here's all the material I'll be using for today's pocket. As you can see, today we're making Mila's pocket. Uh, so in order to do this, I have two cuts of my main material. This is going to be for the back of the pocket. And each of these is seven and a half inches wide by nine inches tall. To go with that, I have a cut of fusible fleece. The fusible fleece is option, but I do like the feel it gives. You want this to be a smaller cut though, because we don't really want to sew a bunch of layers into the sides. So this cut is six and a half inches wide by eight inches tall. For the pocket, remember we're gonna pleat this. So the pocket needs to be kind of big so that we can make those folds so that it can stick out a little bit. So my pocket cut 
is actually 11 and a half inches wide by eight inches tall. And then I have a couple little extra bling pieces here. This is actually a heat transfer vinyl. It's supposed to look like a book. And then I used my Cricut to cut that out. And I used my Cricut to cut out some of this little vinyl right here, the shiny vinyl. Um, I just drew her name out and then I'll stitch this one on manually. So I'm going to heat press this one on and then I'm gonna stitch on her name at the sewing machine. So I'm gonna show you how I do that. All right, so when adhering heat transfer vinyl, you really wanna make sure you have a proper sort of press to do this, whether it's a big press or a small press. An iron does work, but the, the goal with heat transfer vinyl is that you need to apply heat and pressure. So both of those things need to be applied at the same time, not just heat. So since I have to use my little Cricut heat press contraption here anyways, I'm just gonna use that to also apply the fusible fleece. So I'm gonna grab one of my main panels and lay it wrong side up. And then I'm gonna grab my fusible fleece and I'm going to just center it over the back. If you wanna mark about half of an inch away from all four edges so it's perfectly centered, you can do that. And I'm gonna grab a scrap piece of material. This is just scrap piece of quilt cotton. And I'm going to put my heat press over it and I'll let it go ahead and run for 30 seconds. Pull that off, and now I have my fusible fleece adhered to one of my main panels. I can set that to the side. And before we apply our design to the center of our pocket, I do want to make some marks here because we will lose a lot of the sides because of those folds. So we're gonna measure two and a half inches in from each side edge. And I'm just gonna make a mark with my chalk pen. We'll make a couple more marks in a little bit, but for now, this is the one I really need to focus on. Okay, so by doing that, I now have my window of where I can apply things. And if I wanna be even more precise, I'm gonna go ahead and just mark the midpoint on the top and bottom because that will help me navigate where to put my heat transfer vinyl and my applique. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do is apply my heat transfer vinyl. And I know I'm covering up that fun imagery. Don't, it was Mila's design, okay? I just do what I'm told, that's it. So honestly, I'm just gonna kinda of eyeball this. Um, I'll probably put that like there and before I, Put it down, let me just make sure I'll be able to get my text on here. Yeah, that should work. That should be cute, something like that. Okay, we'll try that. So I'm just gonna kind of center this to the best of my ability. And then I'm gonna cover this with a pressing cloth, just like I did before. And I'm going to press this down using the Cricut heat press. All right, and this glittery material, it needs to cool down a bit before I pull off the protective sheet. I'm not doing a whole Cricut tutorial today on how to design, cut out, things like that, but if you guys are interested in seeing um, how I designed out our pockets and things like that, then just leave a comment down below and we can do a little, little side tutorial going over that. So I'm gonna set this to the side while it cools off. All right, so let's work on the main panel. So we're just gonna take our two main panels and lay them wrong sides together and then grab some clips and just clip around all four edges. All right, once I have these clipped together, I'm gonna to take this to the sewing machine and I'm just gonna baste along all four edges at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Okay, don't worry about adding binding yet. We have to wait till the pocket's done before we add the binding on here. Now going back to my pocket, I'm gonna remove that plastic protector carrier sheet. And now I'm going to applique my name on. Now I put little pieces of double-sided tape along the back of all these little pieces here. So I'm just gonna kind of lay it out how I think I want it, making sure it's within my window. Yeah, I think we're gonna do something like that. So I'm just going to tape this all down as well as I can. So now this part is the most tedious, but now I'm gonna take this to the sewing machine and I'm going to turn my speed down, my stitch speed down to the very short, slowest setting. And I'm going to top stitch all this down at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. All right, so the first, sorry, I didn't even realize I didn't show I didn't show sewing and basting the, the main panels together. Uh, but it, it takes me a while to do this type of applique. And if you notice, I have a lot of tails here, especially for this name, because this font has a lot of skinny bits. I don't really wanna go back and forth over those. 
uh, when I'm kind of coming back. So I just stop at a stitch and then end it and then put my needle down in another stitch and go on. So in order to make sure nothing falls out though, I'm gonna go to the back here and I'm gonna pull on every single one of these bobbin threads. And as I pull on it, I'm gonna see a little loop of the top thread coming in from the front side. And I'm gonna pull those back. And as I have the bobbin and top thread both pulled back, I'm gonna do three knots to hold it in place. Yes, this is tedious. That's, that's just applique. Applique can be very tedious. It's beautiful results though. It's worth the work in my opinion. Uh, but if you're selling these, then yeah, you would, you would definitely wanna charge more for this versus just using like a heat transfer vinyl. So I'm gonna do this for all of my tails back here. All right, it takes time, but man oh man is that cute, isn't it? That's beautiful. All right, so before we attach the pocket, I wanna add some binding to the top of it. So I'm just going to lay out my binding. This is going to be at least 11 and a half inches long. And with this adhesive binding, what I like to do, um, because you can't really mark the midpoint on the back of it because it's sticky. So I like to just fold it in half with that paper on the back still, and that will give a nice crease on the material and then I'll open it back up and then take the paper off and then lay my binding sticky side up and then I just take the top edge of my pocket and I'm just gonna lay it so that the top edge matches up with that midpoint fold and you see I just kind of go bit by bit all the way down there we go once I have that done I'll take the top bit of my binding and just wrap it around the top edge this is really just decorative um, so if you don't if you don't want to mess with it you don't have to if you're not doing the binding today then you can skip it, but I like it. All right, and once I have that in place, I'm gonna top stitch along the bottom edge here at an eighth of an inch seam allowance to hold it down. All right, after you have that stitched down, make sure you always check the back and make sure you caught the back edge. And then if you have overextended your binding like I did, go ahead and trim that down. Here we go. So now grab a ruler and some sort of marking tool, and we're gonna measure in one and a half inches from each side and make a mark. And then also measure two and a half inches in from each side and make a mark. So do this on both sides and make sure whatever marking tool you're using, it'll come off. So air erasing marker for lighter colored material, the silver ink pen if you're using a vinyl or something, and then chalk is also great for darker material. So I'm just going to finger press this because the material I'm using it will work fine. So on the two and a half inch mark, the one that's furthest in, we're gonna press the material wrong sides together. And honestly, I can just press this with my fingers. If you wanna iron this, go ahead and do that. Even if it's water resistant canvas, just make sure you're very careful if you have any applique or heat transfer vinyl on here. Um, maybe use just the very tip of your iron or a small iron. I'm using clips here to help hold it down. And then on the one and a half inch mark, you're gonna fold that so that the material is right sides together. So if you would instead like to mark the one and a half inch mark on the back of your material so you can see it better, go ahead and do that. I'm gonna do that because it is easier. I'm just gonna use my silver ink pen because I cannot find my air erasing marker. So then fold the material right sides together on that one and a half inch mark. All right, so I have the left side folded in. I'm gonna repeat that on the right side, just folding back and forth. Okay, so now that we have the pockets clipped or pressed on the sides, line up the bottom edge here and just use your clips to just focus on this bottom edge and make sure that the foldovers stay where they are. And then double check to make sure that this bottom edge here is seven and a half inches long. If it's more or less, just adjust the folds to make it so that it is seven and a half inches long. And now let's go to the sewing machine and just quickly baste along this bottom edge to hold these folds in place. All right, so if you use clips like I did for the folds, you can remove those now. It's the rest we just need the raw edges for. And if you iron this, then it should all stay pretty firm. And like I said, if you're using cool cotton, use that craft fuse on the back of this. It'll make it so that when you press these seams, it's almost like paper. It'll stay perfectly intact. I'm okay with it expanding like this because when I stitch it down, that means the pocket will just push out like that, which is what I want. Now grab your main panel, the backing. So remember this is basted wrong sides together and lay it so that whatever you want to be behind the pocket is right side up. And then first line up this bottom edge corner to corner and clip the bottom edges together. Remember your pocket is right side up. And then go to the side and bring the raw side edge of the pocket in to meet the raw side edge of the back. 
and clip together. Do this on the other side as well, just tucking in that raw edge so it all lines up. All right, now let's take this to the sewing machine and just baste along the sides and the bottom to hold it all in place at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. How stinking cute is this? Oh, and I love this shiny vinyl, it's so fun. All right, next thing we're gonna do is add the binding around the entire edge. So just like I did before, I'm gonna prep my binding by pressing it in half, wrong sides together, long sides together. And that's just gonna give me the midpoint mark. You'll have to decide which of these is easier. Honestly, I think using the non-adhesive binding for this step is a little bit easier. I use that with some double-sided tape, but I only use it on one edge, and it makes it um, a little easier to work with. However, this is also this is also very good. Alrighty, I like to start on the bottom, so I'm going to flip this around so I'm looking at the bottom edge here, and I'm going to I'm not going to peel the paper off the entire strip of binding because then it will just get stuck to itself and it'll be a mess. So I'm just gonna peel it off in sections as I go. So starting it out, I'm just gonna go just like this. I'm gonna lay my binding, sticky side up, and I'm gonna lay the bottom raw edge of my material so that it meets up with that midpoint mark. There we go, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fold it over until I get to close to the corner over here, and then I'm gonna flip this over like that takes a little strategery here. You can open up the back a bit. And I'm gonna rotate the binding down so that the midpoint comes right on the raw edge of the seam. And as I do that, I'm gonna fold the binding over here on the corner so it becomes like a little triangle. And then I'm gonna fold that down so we have a nice little 45 degree angle here. And I'm gonna flip it back to the front and I'm gonna do the same thing on the front side, just kind of lifting up the binding to get that angle and then folding it down. It takes practice, honestly. And then continue along all four edges and corners repeating that. So just sticking it down, wrapping it around, and then doing your best to angle those corners. And if you're using material that's not working well with the stickiness, <laughs> uh, you're more than welcome to grab some clips and just use the clips to help hold down some sections. Nothing about this has to be terribly precise. And once you get down to the end, just have the binding overhang by about an inch or so, and then just wrap it around where you started, trying to line up the raw edges as well as you can. If you find that you have some of the under piece peeking out and you don't like it, you can always just fold it in on itself at an angle or even cut it down a bit, That's what I like to do and then rewrap it so that it all lines up the way you like. All right, once you have this attached, either with tape, clips, whatever you need, uh, we're gonna go to the sewing machine and we're just going to top stitch along all four edges at an eighth of an inch seam allowance and I'm doing it off of that inner raw edge. You, wanna be, you might wanna do a little bit more than an eighth of an inch seam allowance just in case the backing isn't exactly where it needs to be. You don't want to miss any of the back edges. Alrighty, how cute is that? Look at that. I don't know if you can tell it. That's a book. It's supposed to be a book. Uh, I'm, I don't I don't claim to be a Cricut master, but that looks cute. And so you see, this is just the back edge of water resistant canvas. It's, I mean, it's fine. It's not something that I, I personally feel upset about. So now all we have to do is add the grommets. So with grommets, you have a top and a bottom. The top has this like ring coming from it. And then the disc is the bottom here. And I do punch the holes through the folds. So if that's not something you wanna do, um, you can probably pick this up and then press in underneath this side fold. I press through all of it. Again, if you're very conscientious about this, you can definitely adjust the measurements, make it a little bit wider so that you don't have to do that. But I'm gonna show you what I do. Okay, so I'm gonna take the top piece and what I'm doing is I'm just lining it up so that the inner circle here is lining up close to the edge of my binding. Now, I don't want to cut through any stitches. That's the goal here. So I'm just gonna line this up and I'm just eyeballing it. I'm just gonna trace the inside of the circle just like that. I'm gonna do the same thing on the left bottom corner. And this, like I said, is over the folds. There we go. And in the top here, I'm gonna do the same thing, but I'm not going to go over the top binding of my pocket. So I'm gonna pull that out of the way. And once again, I'm just going to kind of get this up there. 
I'm gonna use an air erasing marker for this one so I can see it. And I'm just tracing inside that circle. And I'm doing the same thing on the top left edge. Now I'm doing four grommets because this might be a middle pocket sometimes, it might be a bottom pocket, I'm not sure. If you know for sure that this pocket's going to be a bottom pocket and it's never gonna have another one attached to it, then only do the grommets on the top. So now I have my rivet press and then I have my die set to punch out the holes. You could just use a seam ripper and some very small scissors to cut these out if you prefer, but the hole punch is very quick. So I'm just gonna carefully lay this up and I'm gonna line up the inside of my punch with that circle I drew and just punch it down and you see, pop it out, nice big hole. So I'm gonna do this for all four corners. Okay, I'm gonna remove this die set and I'm gonna put in the die set to install my grommets. And like I said, there are other ways to do grommets. I know some have like a hammer. Um, there are other ways to do it. This is just my preferred preference. So. The top piece for me is gonna be the one that has like that cylinder coming out the bottom and I'm gonna push that through the right side and then I'm gonna flip this over and I'm gonna insert this into my press, I don't know if you can see, so that the grommet I just installed lays inside of the bottom die and then I'm gonna grab my disc and I like it so that like the curved bit is facing up so it's kind of like a, like a little ditch that I can see and I'm gonna lay that over my bottom die. I don't know if you can see, looks just like that. And then I'm just gonna push this down. Nice and tight for grommets. And you see, easy peasy. So I'm gonna repeat that with the other three. Alrighty, how stinking cute is that? These grommets are so sweet. So now all we have to do is attach it to previous pockets and we have another one of these. It takes time but it's for a really fun trip. So uh, so that's how you make a pocket. So now we're just gonna quickly go over how to make the top piece, uh, which is very simple, but I just wanna show you how what I do to make it, and then we can put it all together. Okay, so here are the pieces for the top part of the fish extender. I'm gonna be using two pieces of material, whatever main material you wanna use. Each of these is seven and a half inches wide by six inches tall. I will tell you, you can make the back piece smaller if you'd like, if you wanna reduce bulk, but it's not necessary. I'll give you that tip once we get there. But each one of these for now is seven and a half inches wide by six inches tall. And then I have a fusible fleece cut, which is six and a half inches wide by four inches tall. And then I have a 12 inch long, three eighths of an inch in diameter wooden dowel. Now this, this can be anything, but you do want it to be kind of skinny and sturdy. And then I also have some binding. You're gonna need about a yard of binding. This is gonna be a non-adhesive binding, but it's the same kind of binding that we used previously. Now, I'm not gonna add any sort of design to the top this time. However, if you wanted to, I will let you know, using the measurements that I've given you here, you have about a three inch by six inch window, okay? Taller than that, and you're gonna get some stitching on it. So you wanna make sure you know you have three inches by six inch window here for a design. So if you wanna put your family name or something like that there, uh, again, you could always make this bigger if you want to. You, you can play with this a lot. So this is just how I'm doing it. Okay, I got my other iron out because I put away my Cricut ones. So I'm gonna take my front panel here and I'm gonna lay it wrong side up. And then I'm gonna take my cut of fusible fleece and I'm just gonna center it and have it closer to the bottom, just like that. And then I'm gonna grab some scrap material again. And I'm just going to fuse this fusible fleece onto the back of my main panel. Okay, so here's something I want you to think about, okay, once we have this fused on. Right now, both of my main panels are the same size, and so when I put them wrong sides together and then add my binding, right, and then I'm going to fold the top edge. The top edge is the one that doesn't have the fusible fleece. We're gonna fold that back to the back, just like this. If you're using a thick material and that's gonna be a lot of bulk for you to stitch down right here with all those layers, then what you can do is you can take the back panel that does not have the fusible fleece and you can cut this to about four to four and a half inches tall instead of the same height. So it can be a shorter height. So I'm just gonna fold this down to show you. This is what I did on the first one. So let's say we cut that down and now when we stitch this in place, this is what the back will look like. The back will be shorter than the front but then whenever you fold this over in the end and stitch it down, you'll never see it and it's less bulky to sew. 
Now this is gonna be great with Fairtex or any sort of nylon material we're using, that's gonna be fine. With quilt cotton, I wouldn't suggest that because now your material is gonna to be too thin and this is the very top of your fish extender, which means it's going to have the most weight on it. So you do want it to have some structure. I'm gonna leave them as is just to try it out. So I'm gonna take both my front and back main panels and lay them wrong sides together. Then I'll grab some clips and just clip along the edges. And like I said, I'm not putting any design on this one just for time's sake but you can have a lot of fun with heat transfer vinyl and applique here. And now I'm just gonna go baste along all four edges at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Okay, once you have this basted on, you need to calculate how much binding you need to use. So to do that, you need to find the perimeter. The perimeter is just the length of all four edges and then we add a little bit extra. So for this one here, the perimeter is about 27 inches. We want it to be longer than that. I'm gonna say 30 inches if you're using the same size as me. So I'm gonna cut my binding down to 30 inches. And then I took a ruler and I went down the back edge of my binding and I marked the midpoint line. So this is one inch wide binding. So I just measured up half of an inch. And now I'm gonna grab some double-sided tape and you can add double-sided tape on both sides if you'd like um, and work on it one at a time or just one side. I find one side's fine for me. I'm just gonna add some double-sided tape just below that line. And then just like I did with the other pocket, I'm gonna kind of peel off the paper as I go. So I'm just gonna peel off some of it. I'm gonna grab my top panel and I'm gonna look at the bottom edge. I always like to start on the bottom edge. I feel like it's less noticeable. And I'm gonna lay this down so that bottom raw edge matches up just below the midpoint line and it's gonna be on the tape side. And once I have this tape down, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to flip this so I'm looking at the other side, so the back, and then I'm gonna rotate my binding, kind of twisting it like this. And I'm gonna match up this raw edge here on the side just below that midpoint mark and as I'm twisting this, you see I'm creating this corner here. Now this is not on the tape side, there's no tape here. So I'm just gonna kind of gently fold this with my finger and then wrap the binding around to the back to get it to stick. So then when I look at the front, this is what I see. Now as I'm going, I can be adding clips just so I can see everything properly. And the reason I like this is because it just kind of holds down the back here so I don't have to worry about it while I get the front to look the way I want. So with the front here, I'm gonna add some clips to the side and straighten this out so that the inner edge of my binding keeps going straight up. But then I have a folded edge here at a 45 degree angle and then I'm gonna fold the whole edge down so that it all kind of meets up and lines up neatly and then put a clip there. And I'm gonna repeat that for all four corners and all four edges. And just like we did before, once you get to the overhang part, just trim it down by, so it overhangs by about an inch or so and wrap it around the start. And with this type of binding, I leave it all raw edge, which is fine. Uh, but if you wanna fold it down at an angle, you can definitely do that, whatever, whatever makes you comfortable here. All right, once you have your binding attached, let's take it to the sewing machine and let's top stitch along the inner edge of your binding at an eighth of an inch seam allowance along all four edges. Okay, how cute is this looking? So make sure if you don't have like a, a print to let you know where the top and bottom is, make sure you feel so that you know this is the top of the fusible fleece there. Cause then what we do is we just take our rod and we wrap this around the rod and then stitch it down. Now you can stitch it down with the rod in there if you'd like, if you wanna use a zipper foot for that or you don't have to. So I'll show you, I'll fold it over and then I'll tell you how far I folded this over. Now again, your you know rod of choice, whatever you're using is gonna determine how much you fold this over. So I'm good with it just like this. So I'm just going to clip this in place. And honestly, you could get like a twig or stick from outside. I mean, it doesn't have to be anything fancy here. So then I'm going to remove that. And when I fold this down, I measured mine back about one and three eighths. So I did about one and three eighths from the top edge, wrapped it to the back just like that. And now I'm gonna go to the sewing machine and I'm gonna top stitch right along this edge of my binding at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Make sure you back stitch well at the beginning and the end. And if you're concerned that maybe this stitching isn't going to stand the test of time, you can add a couple of rivets right here. I would just add two rivets, one on each corner down here, and that will definitely help. So now I'm just going to insert this rod just like that all the way through. Ta-da! And now we just have to add a couple grommets. So I'm going to add these grommets just like I did on the pocket. I'm just going to take one of the top grommets that has the cylinder on the back, and I'm going to line it up 
with my binding, so it's lining up with the edge of my binding. So I'm not cutting through any stitches and I'm not cutting through my binding. I'm pretty much just lining up that cylinder right with the edge. And then I'm just gonna mark that hole on both corners. And then I'm gonna grab my rivet press and the hole punch die set. And I'm going to punch out these holes. Then I'm gonna grab the die set for the grommets and install that. And I like the grommet that has the cylinder on the back to be on the front. So I'm just gonna insert that on the front side, flip this over, lay it so that that front grommet is tucked into the bottom die. Grab one of these little discs and that's the back grommet and it's gonna go over that bottom die and around it. And then I'm just gonna push it down and I'm going to repeat this for the other corner. And you only have two grommets on the top piece. And there you go, the top piece is done. This can be very simple, it doesn't have to be anything fancy at all, but again, you could put your family name on here. You could make a new top piece for every single cruise and uh, put like the cruise date, which would be really cute. What a fun little souvenir and you could like collect them and create. I have a lot of ideas. <laughs> okay, so now I'm gonna take my pocket and I have these here, so I'll show you these ones first. So if you're gonna use something like this, it's like an O-ring almost, but it has a clasp, it opens up like this. It's kinda like a keychain. And I'm gonna insert that through the grommet on the top. And then I'm also gonna insert that through the top grommet on my pocket, just like that. So the nice thing about these is that as this moves around, as it gets kind of banged around, it's not gonna come undone. See, it's gonna stay together and it holds the pockets nice and close to one another. However, depending on where you put your grommet, it might hold them too close to one another. They might overlap kind of like that and that might not be the look you're going for. So if this isn't something you wanna use, then you can try out these shower curtain S hooks, which are really fun. So I just like to put the shorter, the smaller bit on the top part, and then you just hook on your pocket. And you see, now it's hanging there. It's not gonna come off or anything. Again, when this is hanging, it's not going to come apart. If it's in your suitcase, then yeah, these will probably come out. But when it's hanging on the door, it's not gonna come apart. So many options for here. Even if you wanna just use pretty ribbon and tie these together, that's fine too. Uh, when it comes to hanging this, you can use some rope, you can use some ribbon, you can use a bag strap. Uh, you gotta get creative with that. Unfortunately, I, I wanna use rope, but I don't have any on hand, so I can't show you how to do that. But pretty much you just tie them into knots and then use like a 36 inch long piece of rope or something like that, because you can always shorten it when you get to your room if you want to. Um, but yeah, this is, this is so fun. I hope you love making these and I really hope you love using these. Okay. How stinking cute is this? Oh my gosh, Mila with her book. Ew, she can't really tell it's a book. That's okay, but look how beautiful all this turned out. And isn't it fast? Isn't it quick? So here's the one I made in preparation of the video. Here's the one I made here. What I'm gonna end up doing is just taking Mila's pocket and attaching it to this one over here. Uh, I probably, maybe, I don't know. I'll probably make another pocket, um, at least one for Bobby and then maybe another pocket for just Derek and I to share so that we have the whole family available and so that way as we cruise, we can just kind of switch out pockets and stuff like that. But you guys, I hope you love making this. This is really, really fun and really easy. So if you're going on a cruise, let me know. Let me know, we're always looking to cruise. We love cruising so much. We have the Ogle Cruise planned for April, but as of right now, that's the only cruise we have for 2024. Uh, cruising on Disney is not an inexpensive experience, but it is, in our opinion, definitely worth it. It's very, very magical. So if you have any sort of cruises coming up, let, tell me about it. I'm gonna live vicariously through you. I hope you love sewing with me today. Have a great day. Have a fantastic rest of your week. Get out there and make something. Bye guys. Thank you so much for watching today's tutorial. I hope that you are inspired to go make something and have a lot of fun with these patterns. If you're not already subscribed, please make sure you click subscribe down below. Also make sure you hit that little bell, the little notification bell. That's gonna make sure you're notified every single time we have a new video or when we go live. For even more fun content from Oak Roads, make sure you're following us on Facebook and Instagram. We do daily stories over there, which include unboxing, talks about books, other little mini tutorials, lots and lots of discussion over all kinds of things going on. You can also find us on TikTok and also on Reels for even more fun, kind of more random content. And if you really wanna dive in for some behind the scenes content, free gifts, access to shop items before anybody else, and influence on upcoming videos, make sure you go check out Oak Alerts over on Patreon. We have a lot going on over there and it's a fun place to hang out and you are directly supporting the Oak Alerts YouTube channel. These videos could not be possible without the help of my Patreon. So thank you so, so much to everybody over there. Thank you again for watching today's tutorial. I hope you enjoy the videos. Go make something.